In this lecture, we're going to look at the concept of entropy. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain what is meant by the term entropy and, ex and explain how it changes with the physical state of a substance. You should also be able to calculate the entropy change for our reaction given the standard entropy values of the reactants and products. So I wanted to try to explain to you this concept of entropy, which is a very strange concept. We've got two desks here, what I like to call the chemistry desk and the biology desk. Now, as you can see, the biology, sorry, the chemistry desk is very ordered, whereas the biology desk is very messy, very disordered, chaos. So. The ordered chemistry desk has got very low entropy, whereas the messy biology desk has got very high entropy. So an ordered system has got low entropy, a disordered system has got high entropy. We'll now see how that plays out in a more chemical context. So entropy is the measure of disorder of a system. Uh, it's given the symbol S and as we saw in that introduction, the greater the disorder, the greater the entropy. So let's look at uh, how that plays out when we're looking at different elements. And of particular importance in this respect is what state they're in, whether or not they're solid, liquid or gas. So. If you look at the particles in the solid, they seem fairly well ordered. Maybe slightly less so in the liquid and even less so in the gas. However, uh, to show that better, I really want to see them when they're moving. So, particles in the solid just vibrate around. They do move, but uh, they remain very ordered. The liquid, however, the particles can change places, so that makes them far more disordered than the solid. And then the gas goes absolutely mental. Uh, so, at the solid, we've got a lot of order, so we've got low entropy. And the gas, we've got very high disorder, so high entropy. So we get this increase in entropy as you go from a solid through to a liquid through to a gas. Now, if we look at any substance, we always find that the entropy increases with temperature. And if we plot entropy against temperature, we'll always get a graph that looks something like this. Okay. So, at a temperature of zero, and this is zero degrees Kelvin, okay, everything has an entropy of zero. It's everything is totally ordered. But as you heat up the substance, particles in the solid start to shake around a bit more. Uh, so this at this stage it's a solid. Okay. And then eventually, so as they shake around a bit more, the disorder increases. And then eventually they melt. And this vertical jump in entropy is the melting process. So in this stage of the diagram here, it's a liquid, which has far higher entropy than the solid. And again, the entropy increases with temperature. Then it boils or evaporates and turns into a gas and it's got even higher entropy. So this diagram is similar for all compounds, although the temperature at which the melting and boiling takes place will obviously vary from uh, substance to substance. So what to take away from this diagram is that changes of state from solid to liquid, from liquid to gas, are accompanied by very large increases in entropy. And secondly, According to the third law of thermodynamics, if you're interested, uh, the entropy of a perfect crystal at zero degrees Kelvin is zero. 
Okay, so we're going to look at a couple of uh, multiple choice past paper questions which uh, are based on this information, although it may, you may not recognise it as such at first. So, one mole of which of the following chlorides would have the greatest entropy at 750 degrees C and the temperature is important. To help you with this question, I suggest you look up page 9 of your data booklet. Okay, so pause the tape, have a wee look at that and see if you can work out what's going on. Okay, so if you look up the melting boiling point of sodium chloride on page 9 of your data booklet, you'll find that sodium chloride melts at 801 degrees C so it's still going to be solid at 750 so this is going to be a solid calcium chloride melts at 775 so it will still be a solid at 750 potassium chloride melts at 770 so it's still a solid and magnesium chloride melts at 714 so at 750 it turned into a liquid uh, it doesn't boil to 1400 so it will be a liquid so these all being solid will have low entropy this being a liquid will have a higher entropy so the answer is going to be D as a liquid any liquid will have a higher entropy than any solid or indeed if there was a gas any gas would have a higher entropy than any liquid or solid okay what about this one which of the following reactions would show the greatest decrease in entropy again pause the tape see if you can work it out yourself and then I'll go through the answer Okay, for A, we've got two moles of gas as reactants, two moles of gas as products. So there's probably not a great change in the entropy there, maybe small changes, but you've gone from two moles of gas to two moles of gas. In B, you start off with a solid and you end up with a solid and a gas. So because you've got more gas as products than you did as reactants, there'd be quite a big increase in the entropy here. So we're looking for the one that gives a decrease in entropy. So it won't be B because that will have an increase in entropy. C, two aqueous solutions. So solutions just consider as liquids when it comes to entropy. And here we've got a liquid and a gas. So once more we've produced a gas. So we've produced a lot more chaos, a lot more disorder, a lot higher entropy. So it won't be C, so it's going to have to be D. In D, we've got a solution and a gas and water as a liquid. And our products are all solutions. So we've gone from having a gas to not having a gas. So there'll be a decrease in entropy. So the answer would be D. So all those things you can just do by looking at the states in that gas, high disorder, solids, low disorder. Okay, but what if we actually want to get a measure on the exact uh, quantitative value of the change in entropy rather than just saying, oh, it increases or it decreases? Okay, well, in our data booklet, page 17 of the data booklet, you'll find the standard entropy values for a variety of substances. Okay, uh, obviously you won't be able to see it very well here, but this is a, just a screenshot of page 17 of your data booklet. And in this instance, we're not interested in this side of the data booklet. It's this table here, which lists the standard entry values for a wide variety of substances. What I want to, do, want to draw your attention to, though, is the units of entropy. Okay, so 
The units for entropy are joules per kelvin per mole. Okay, so not kilojoules that we're used to when we have the entropy values, they're always kilojoules per mole. It's joules per kelvin per mole. And note, capital K for kelvin, small k when you're doing kilojoules. Okay, so joules per kelvin per mole. If you're working out an entropy value, you get to the answer and you can't quite remember what the units are, remember just to look it up on page 17 of the data booklet. It tells you joules per kelvin per mole. Okay. Right, here's our equation that we can then use to work out the entropy change for a reaction. Very similar to the one we saw in the previous lecture for working out the entropy change based on entropy of formations. So the entropy change is the sum of the entropy values of the products take away the sum of the entropy value of the reactants. And again, you'll find this equation in your data booklet. So calculate the entropy change for the following reaction. Okay. So we look up page 17 of our data booklet. Okay. And uh, write in underneath each substance what the value is for the standard entropy. For hydrogen, it's 131. Okay. For oxygen, it's 205. And for H2O, in the gaseous state, it's 189. Be careful, because you'll see there's two different values in your data booklet. One for H2O as a liquid, and one for H2O as a gas. Okay. We then want to multiply through by the number of moles. So we've got two lots of H2, so that would be 262. Only one lot, one mole of oxygen, and two moles of H2O. So that's going to be 300 and... Oops. 378 so the entropy value is the sum of the entropy of the products minus the sum of the entropy of the reactants so the products 378 minus the reactants which are 262 and 205. So that's 378 minus, so that's 467. So we negative 89 units, and about joules per Kelvin. Per mole. So, oops. so the entropy change for this reaction is minus 89 joules per kelvin per mole. Okay, so let's give you an example to do on your own. Okay, so calculate the entropy change for the following reaction. So pause the tape, try it yourself, then I'll run through the answer. So, hopefully you got the answer of 179 joules per kelvin per mole. So by now you should be able to explain what is meant by the term entropy and how it changes with the physical state of the substance. 
we should also be able to calculate the entropy change for our reaction given the standard entropy values of the reactants and the products.